it seems like almost every week now that somebody reaches out to me and asks why Caracorder doesn't build a Hall's Effect keyboard. Yes, I'm very aware of how trendy this technology is in the industry right now, but there's a very good reason why we intentionally omit ourselves from the list of companies that are rushing to release their own version of this technology. In this video, I'm gonna cover the basics of Hall's Effect technology. I'm gonna talk about some of the prototypes that we've built using that tech, and I'm also going to be talking about the objectively superior switch technology that we've chosen to use in the Master Forge. So the physics is pretty simple. Essentially, you run a current through a conductive plate, and as a magnet approaches that plate, the flow is disrupted to the point you can measure a voltage differential on either side of that plate, depending on how close or how far away the magnet is. So practically speaking, when it comes to a keyboard switch, you can imagine that the switch cap that you're pressing would be that magnet. And you're now able to um, have an analog rather than a digital output. So rather than just on off, you can tell okay, I'm one millimeter down, I'm two millimeters down, or however, there, there's a spectrum rather than a switch, essentially. And if you browse the marketing content of any keyboard manufacturer that makes a Hall Effect keyboard, I can guarantee you, you will see some version of this exact GIF here, which is advertising the potential of a Hall Effect switch uh, to be more reactive than a traditional mechanical switch. And it's not just true of Hall Effect switches, it's true of of any analog switch, that it can be programmed to, at any point along that, uh, that range of motion, the moment you start to lift your finger off the keys, it can send a signal rather than having to wait for you to pass a, a physically designated actuation point. And while there's nothing technically false about this claim, I think it's important to recognize that this is marketing. So there's a lot of oversimplification happening and there's some information that's just pretty blatantly and intentionally left out of this little explanatory animation here. So today I'm gonna to give a shot at recreating this animation with uh, some additional information included to more directly compare the different switch technologies. And I'm also going to add a third switch technology. All right, so I downloaded After Effects and I made my own little version of this GIF that's been circulating. But in addition to just showing um, what I have titled here as the Twitch response, um, I'm also showing four other different switch characteristics which are uh, just as important, if not more important, than the Twitch response. And in addition to showing the Hall Effect analog switch, as well as the mechanical switch, I've got a third option here on the right, which is a snap action switch. Mechanical switches and Hall effect switches come in all different sizes and shapes and colors, but they're all pretty similar in terms of their overall footprint. These snap action switches are much different. I'm gonna get back to that animation here shortly and break down the many advantages of snap action switches. But first I wanna talk about why you've never seen a keyboard that uses snap action switches before. For starters, snap action switches are way more expensive than traditional keyboard switches. So if I was going to build a keyboard with a uh, hundred keys on it, that would cost me $123 just for the switches. And even if you're buying at quantities over 2000, you're paying over a dollar a switch. Uh, compare that to this is a pretty high quality mechanical keyboard switch or I can get 110 for $31. So it's it's basically four times more expensive. But just because they come in a premium, that doesn't mean they're not widely used in input devices all around the world. The chances are if you own a computer mouse, you use snap action switches every single day. And if you really break down at a fundamental level, the core difference in how people use a mouse versus how they use a keyboard, this is where things get really interesting. Because a mouse is designed so that my fingers never have to break contact with the switches. So I have instantaneous access to all these inputs at all times with the minimum amount of travel and the minimum amount of effort expended. If you blink, you might miss my finger pressing that switch. There's a reason why we intuitively assign mouse control to the most critical functions in any given software. 
Think about an esports example, why firing your weapon is always assigned to your mouse. You just have a greater level of precision and there's no ambiguity of when something is pressed or when something is released. Whereas on a keyboard, it's immediately apparent how much more effort is expended even if I just stay on the home row. And of course, the reality is that my fingers are flying all over the place. It's interesting that on a one-dimensional keyboard, it requires three-dimensional movement of your hand, whereas on a three-dimensional keyboard, it only requires one dimension of motion at a time. With the Master Forge, I don't have to worry about a lot of those same limitations that I would have on a QWERTY keyboard. I can type anything without finger travel. I can access my full alphabet and all my letters, numbers, you know, whatever else I could possibly do on my keyboard, I can do on my Master Forge without my fingers breaking contact because of the three dimensional switches. And a lot of times people will say, oh, it's like typing on a joystick. And that's a common misconception. The snap action switches as a part of each 3D switch assembly in the Master Forge are a completely different classification of sensor than an analog stick. Now, this is much more akin to actually a Hall's effect switch uh, than it is a snap action switch. And typing on this would be a nightmare. It is, uh, it has no auditory or haptic feedback, which is incredibly important for both text entry and gaming. And look at the travel distance on this. It's even slightly larger than the travel distance on a keyboard switch. Compare that travel distance with the travel distance on a Master Forge. It's, it's not even close. The Master Forge is the best of both worlds. So unlike a mouse where I'm very constrained in my number of possible inputs, I can access uh, everything that a keyboard can, and in fact, much more. And then unlike a keyboard, my fingers never have to break contact with the device, and I'm able to access all of those switches with the most minimum amount of effort, the most minimum amount of finger travel, and reducing the amount of repetitive strain required to use the device. So before we get back into this animation, I want to cover the third and possibly the most important reason why you don't find snap action switches in the modern keyboard. And that reason is that they don't need a reason. The primary design goal of the QWERTY keyboard is not to be as efficient as possible. It is to be as close to the typewriter as possible. And there's a really good quote here from uh, Dr. Dvorak, inventor of the Dvorak keyboard, um, which is essentially like reshuffling the QWERTY letters around to, to be, uh, according to him, more efficient. And he apparently died a bitter man saying, I'm tired of trying to do something worthwhile for the human race. They simply don't want to change. And I think the perspective of Dvorak was that like all these QWERTY users are like drug addicts. They're addicted to QWERTY and they don't want to change. And all the companies that are manufacturing just the same thing that people are used to rather than something which is supposedly better um, are like enablers. And what I learned from his perspective as somebody who in a way is like a kindred spirit to him, as somebody who is, is trying to also create a better alternative to QWERTY, um, I think it's important that we meet people where they're at. If somebody is already, you know, 60 years old, spent their whole life typing on a QWERTY, then yeah, it might not make sense for them to try and learn something new. That's why we make the Carequarter Lite. That's why uh, we make the Carequarter X, so that you can use the technology inside that you find in the Master Forge and other products as well. And I think that when we're looking at making change, making a disruptive change in the world of human computer interaction, we have to do, like, I think Dvorak was bitter, but he just, he didn't do enough, honestly, is my opinion. I think if, if the, the Dvorak layout is 10 or 15% more efficient than QWERTY, that's not enough incentive to learn something new. Like, we have to create something which is not just incrementally better, but something which just blows everything else completely out of the water. And that is the Master Forge. I've done my best to animate and illustrate these four different switch characteristics uh, in this new comprehensive 
version of the GIF we watched at the beginning of this video. The first one is called instant response. I've also referred to this as twitch response, and that's the ability of a switch to send a signal the moment that it changes direction. Of course, the Hall effect, as well as the snap action switch, will both qualify for this, uh, this characteristic. The next characteristic, I'm gonna lump the next two together, auditory feedback as well as haptic feedback. Auditory is being able to hear whenever that signal is sent to the host. And then haptic feedback is being able to feel whenever that signal is sent to the host. And that's what you sacrifice uh, with the analog signal is that you can't, uh, yes, you could build in a click or even the bottom of a switch could be considered haptic feedback. You could program the switch to activate the moment that you bottom out, but uh, you can't have that haptic and auditory feedback be moving with these programmable points along the range of motion of the switch. Um, so you potentially even have misaligned haptic feedback with when that signal is being sent. When we talk about coordination, whether we're referring to sports or esports, we're talking about an athlete's ability to leverage many different senses together. And so most commonly, you'll probably hear hand-eye coordination, but also ear-eye coordination and ear-hand coordination. Like these are all very important. Imagine being a wide receiver who can't, you know, feel a ball as they're watching it fall into their hands, or they can't, you know, hear what's going around on the field when they're, you know, looking up at the air trying to, you know, focus on, uh, on making a big play. And when it comes to esports, uh, it's equally important. So being able to feel whenever your character is changing together, whenever that signal, the immediate moment that it is sent to the host, um, and being able to attune your many different senses all together into your avatar, uh, that importance cannot be understated. And it's also it's equally important in productivity and typing. The last category here is one which is unique to the snap action switch, and that is the spring assisted. So yes, a lot of different types of switches have springs in them, but they're spring resistive, meaning that you're pushing the spring down and then you're letting that spring come back up. With the snap action switch, the spring inside of the enclosure it is like auto polarizing it is dichotomous it, it is either on or it is off and there is no in between once you approach that threshold the moment that you hit it it will pop to one side or the other and that is something which uh, is unparalleled in terms of its ability to very clearly articulate to the user hey this is active or this is inactive. There's, again, there's no ambiguity and that's something that I think um, really when it comes especially to esports and especially to typing and productivity makes the snap action switch a clear winner uh, compared to the other two. That's all I got for you today. I hope that you learned a little something and I'm here to learn from you guys too. So if there's anything that you wanna add, anything that you think could enhance that graphic that I just made or anything that I said that you think needs to be challenged, I hope you'll speak up in the comments and we can continue the conversation. Thanks so much for watching. This is week 30 something of Care Quarter updates every week until the whole world can type at the speed of thought. I'll see you next week.